<laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh, welcome everyone to uh, Let's Talk About God. Um, I want to uh, uh, personally welcome uh, Leone and Brendan and uh, Cindy, and we have uh, Pastor Ben joining us. Uh, Mary Jo, I um, want to welcome you again. And also Anthony, we want to welcome you guys to Let's Talk About God. Um, so a little bit about Let's Talk About God. The purpose of these talks is uh, to share Bible verses that lead to an intelligent faith in, the, in Christ's life and his character and his mission to earth and his death and resurrection. Uh, that, we, that we may know him and render an intelligent choice on which side uh, we choose in the great controversy between Christ and Satan. Um, I believe what Paul said in Romans verses or chapter 14, verse five, where it says, let all be sure and uh, convinced in their own mind. Again, that's Romans chapter uh, 14, verse five. Um, in these talks, we will be inviting our viewers to join us in an open forum where we discuss a monthly topic broken down into weekly talks with Bible verses, which include questions and answers. Uh, each talk will be approximately 45 to 50 minutes. At least that's the time we try to stick to as much as we can. A little bit about the format, as I said, we'll have a monthly topic. This monthly topic is, um, how does God deal with sin and sinners? This is our second talk. Uh, for this month, and the second talk is entitled, What is God's Justice? Um, so the other thing I will add is that because you've joined us in this forum today doesn't mean that you cannot join us in the future or on a weekly basis. We invite all to join as much as you feel uh, that you can, and as much as you're enjoying yourself, feel free to join us uh, on, the weekly, uh, on our weekly talks. And lastly, um, this is a very open forum, and... Um, there may be different points of views uh, from topic to topic or from verse to verse, but we must, and this is a point that we do stress, but we must all remember to respect each other's views and agree to disagree respectfully if necessary. I hope that is pretty clear and we can all be respectful of each other. Um, also, we will be sticking very close to our topic um, uh, of these talks, but there will be opportunities for those who have an individual question that may be off topic to ask that question to us. And you can do that by uh, emailing us at um, let's talk about God three at gmail.com, or you can message us on Facebook at let's talk about God. Now I'll invite James to lead us into prayer before we get started. Amen. Let's pray. Our heavenly father, before we started, this talk we ask for your blessing mm. upon each one of us Amen. baptize us with your holy spirit and be with Sean especially for this talk he need you so so much lord Amen. thank you lord and also bless hyper mary joe brendan pastor ben thompson anthony and Cindy and myself, Lord. Yes, dear Lord. And all other brothers and sisters who listen to us right now mm -hmm. or later on. And um, we thank you so much, Lord, and thank you so much to be with us as well. Put your word into our mouth and open our spiritual eyes and spiritual mind as well. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank thee. Amen. 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 Thank you for that, uh, uh, Brother James. So um, listen, for today's um, talk, um, which was um, entitled, um, What is God's Justice? I've chose verse, uh, my, the, the Bible verse that I chose is Revelation 15 in verse 3. And I just want to read that in two translations, and then we'll get into our um, discussion questions. Um, so Revelation 15 and verse three, and this is from the J.B. Phillips Bible. It says, in their hands they held, or they hold harps, which God has given them, and they are singing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the lamb, and these are the words they sing. Great and marvelous are your works, 
Lord God Almighty. Mm -hmm. Just, key word, just and true are your ways, O King of the saints. Now this one, the second translational version is the expanded Bible. And it reads, they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. You do great and wonderful things, Lord God Almighty, all powerful. Everything the Lord does is right and true. So just and true. And King of nations. So um, that is um, our Bible verse for today in the two translations we've, we've chosen this morning. Um, or this afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. So in line with our uh, talk, I will ask my first question now, and it definitely will be open uh, for um, us to share our understandings and our points of views with, with, um, with the, in, in line with the question, but in reference to the Bible verse. So my, before, I, before I get to my first question, I was almost a little bit ahead of myself. I want to just define from a, the Bible dictionary, not from a Bible, from a dictionary, what the word justice means. Because our question or our topic is, what is God's justice? So the meaning of justice, it is a quality of being just, righteous, equitable, and fair. So that's the meaning of justice. So just keep that in mind as we're discussing and talking about what is God's justice, okay? I hope everyone is okay. Um, my, um, my first question is, who would dare question the integrity or trustworthiness of God? Now, before we get into discussing, I just want to add a little bit of an insight, a little bit of an intro to that. So the one who raised this charge or this accusation against God had not always been God's enemy. He is pictured first, highly honored, and standing in the very presence of our Heavenly Father. As God's trusted spokesman, he went out among fellow angels bearing light and truth. That's why his name was Lucifer, light bearer. And he was called light bearer, sometimes translated Lucifer. And you can read those if you wanted to uh, find those in Exodus uh, 28 and verse 14, Isaiah 14 and 12. And obviously you can look at him in Revelation chapter 12 too, if you want to know how he was before on the fall. So my first question, repeated again, is who would dare question the integrity and trustworthiness of God? I, I think, oh, so, sorry. oh, sorry. Here you go. <laughs> well, no, I was just going to say, um, I mean, Satan questioned God's trustworthiness, but I think we do as well um, as humanity because we fall um, for the lies that um, Satan tells about God's character, and mm. we fall for those lies. True. So yeah. Amen. Very true. Thank you, Cindy. Yes. Before before I answer your question, Sean, I would like to know the people back then in the times of Job, by example, mm -hmm. how what do they think about God justice? And uh, what did they learn from the people before them? Mm. And uh, said an example like uh, we read in the book of Job, chapter 4, verse 7, about uh, Eliphaz. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just read it uh, in, uh, in the Bible and see, and let us see how they value God justice, how, how they think about God justice. In Job chapter four, verse seven said, think back now, he talked to Job about this. Name a single case where someone righteous met with disaster. For him, there is uh, in the past until his times, there is no one righteous who, who met disaster, who something bad happened to them. Right. That according to his opinion and what he had been learned uh, back to the forefather of him as well. In Job chapter 8, verse 4, he said, Your children must have sinned against God. And so he, God, punished them as they deserve. Job lost 10 children, seven boys and three girls. Yeah. 
And what they have done to deserve this death, according to him, you know? But anyway, I just keep on. Verse 20, he said, but God will never abandon the faithful or ever give help to evil people. For him, God never help the evil one and God punish the bad one all the times. And he will never abandon uh, the good one, the faithful one. We, we see on the cross, there is no one like Jesus Christ himself, mm. but God abandoned him. How I know that? Because Jesus Christ himself said, why you abandon me? Yeah. He probably never, never knew that, what the reason. And also we find in Matthew chapter five, verse 43 to 45, God said when he sends the rain, he sent for good and bad because all is his children. He sends the sunshine for good and bad as well. We can read that. In Job chapter, four, in Job chapter 22, verse 5, he said, Not, No, it's because you have seen so much. It's because of all the, the evil you do. And for him, because you suffer right now, because you done something very bad, that's the reason God punish you. That's what he believed. But now let's let's God answer those questions himself. Mm. If we go, if we go into Job chapter forty-two, verses seven and eight, he said, after the Lord had finished finished speaking to Job, he said to Eliphaz, "I am angry with you." and your two friends, friends, because you did not speak the truth about me, the way my servant Job did. <laughs> you see, that God himself, right? And now you can see the character and the government of God as well. Verse eight, he said, now take seven bulls and seven rams to Job and offer them as a sacrifice for yourself. Job will pray for you or will be your high priest and I will answer his prayer and not, and not disgrace you the way you deserve. Right. You did not speak the truth about me as he did. Two times God mentioned that he did not speak the truth about me, right? right. The misrepresent God character is very bad, you see. Mm -hmm. But uh, when we don't know God character is very bad, we should know it. And he invite all of us to know God character. Now, when Job becomes the high priest of uh, these three friends, right? And um, why, why, why God asking them to do a sacrifice? To uh, otherwise they will have something bad on them. The sacrificial system has been given from, from the beginning in the Bible to remind us our sin, mm. not to save us from our sin, but to remind us our sin. But now the free friends should learn, learn a good example and never do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Now in John chapter nine, verse one and two, verse one to three, Jesus himself said, as Jesus walked, as Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been born blind. Verse two, his disciple asked him, teacher, whose sin caused him to be born blind? Yeah. Was, it, was it his own or his parents' sin? Jesus answered verse three, his blindness has nothing to do with his sin, or his parents' sins. He is blind so that God's power might be seen at work in him. Jesus Christ come to destroy the work of Satan. You know, Satan can do everything to destroy us, but God, Jesus Christ come to destroy uh, Satan's work. Now I'm just going to your question now. Who would dare question the integrity, trustworthiness of God? Hmm. Now, there is no need to be afraid of God, my brother and my sister. 
Amen. To be afraid of our heavenly father is to deny what he paid such a price to reveal. Yeah. Though in finite, in majesty and power, God value nothing higher than the freedom of his intelligent creature. Amen. That their love and trust may be freely given. He gave his life to make this eternally clear. Surely such a God is worthy of our deepest rever reverence and willingness to listen and obey. In, in, uh, just before I said that, just before Jesus returned to heaven, he said to his disciple in John chapter 16, verses 26 to 27, before I'm finished, I just share that with you. He said, I need make no promise to plead to the Father for you. Why Jesus said he don't want to intercede to the Father for, for the disciple or for us? What is the reason? Because the Father loves you himself. Yes, my brother, verse 27. He said, um, verse, uh, sorry, where am I? 27. Uh, verse, Verse 27, he said, for the Father himself loves you. Amen. There is no need to, to have someone between God and his children, right? Now, is that means we don't need any mediator? No, we do need one, but not to the Father, between us and to the Father, but between us to the devil. Because when, they, when the devil will accusing you and me, you are a sinner, we can't say, no, I'm not a sinner. We will be a liar, <laughs> right? We need someone to defend us. Jesus Christ will say, yes, he is a sinner. James is a sinner. I agree. He's agree. But he don't like your way. He like my way. Amen. Nothing you can do. Get out of here. What example can we find? When we're going to... Um, First of all, I tell you why I said uh, we not need a mediator uh, because um, before Jesus Christ come to this planet Earth, the Father loves us. John three sixteen, God so loves the world. Jesus Christ word Himself, and now the book of Zechariah chapter three verse one to five, and then you can see how He treat Joshua and how God treat Joshua, and we do need God in our behalf that we don't need anyone between us and God. Yeah. Right? Uh, that's, and yes, another thing I'll, I'll share with you. Now, okay. let, let me tell you that. Uh, before uh, we hear those, those uh, Old Testament as well, is talking about God uh, call us uh, servant, but there is a times now God doesn't want to call us servant, he call us friend. He said, uh, John 15, verse 15, no longer do I call you servant. For the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friend. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. God always welcome our question, as my, my sister Cindy said there. In Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, said, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your, sin, your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall, be, shall become like wolves. Thank you, my brother and my sister, to listen to me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, James. Has uh, anyone else uh, has any comments they'd like to make about uh, the first question about who would dare question um, the trustworthiness um, or the integrity of God? Yeah, I think um, we, like Cindy is saying, and we all know who it is, who's the culprit, <laughs> because it actually started in him. Nobody tempted him, nobody spread lies to him, but he decided in himself that he wanted to be God. Satan, uh, Lucifer, was, like you said, Sean, he, he had a, a beautiful place in the kingdom of God. But he wanted to be God himself. And the saddest part, if you look at when he, when he was spreading this distrust 
to Adam and Eve or to Eve when he spoke to her or, or to show that God is not trustworthy. He, he, he asked questions which, which made God a liar. Um, and, and, and we know that like, like Jesus, many a time Jesus said to, he, to the people that he was speaking to or, or the Pharisees when he was speaking to them, he says, you are from the, your father, uh, uh, Satan, the liar, the father mm-hmm. of lies. So um, Satan has always spread lies because if he speaks the truth about God, then we will see God is right and God is fair. So he turns it slightly and it makes it look God is very unfair or untrustworthy. And, and all of that were just claims he was making. They were just claims. It wasn't proven. It is why we said Jesus came. So I truly think, Sean, it's, it's, it's um, Satan's operating system that flows through um, our lives today, like Cindy said. Uh, the mm-hmm. operating system that we don't trust God, we are from going from a disposition. We are born under sin. Mm-hmm. So we don't have this trust that we're supposed to have. And if we ask ourselves, how can people that follow God, walk with God, that goes to church, still not trust God? Because of this image that is deep within us. It feels right with us because our four parents did it. It feels it's the right thing. But it's the wrong thing. It's the wrong thing. Mm. No. True. Uh, thank you. Thank you for everyone who's who's um, added comments. I just I just want to say too that um, for um, for for God, um, um, I had a thought. I just lost it. But um, but but for God, it I mean it all this whole. Um, controversy started in, in heaven with accusations uh, against God. And, and today um, it's still affecting us because even, even Christians and, and obviously non-believers do not see God as just or, or righteous or equitable or fair in the dealings. And a lot of things that are taking place um, in today's society from, from famines, pestilence to wars, you know, illnesses and things like that. Uh, we all look to God and we're saying, if there was a God, then why wouldn't he heal? Or why did he allow this to happen or that to happen to, you know, my, my family or loved one? And um, the, re- the reality is, is that we have to realize, I think, as you just said, I'm hyper, we're at a disposition, we're under sin. And because of sin, um, there's a lot of things that take place um, here on earth that would not naturally have taken place if we hadn't fallen in, in the garden. And we also have to remember that um, from the beginning, even in uh, Revelation chapter 12, it says that Satan had lost his estate. Well, that was actually in the book of Jude, but he lost his estate. And then it says he came here to earth and Revelation chapter 12 says he comes with great wrath. He's angry and things like that. And um, I think we need to kind of understand it. And I think Job, as, as, as James referred to, is a great book for us to reference in light of uh, what's happening behind the scenes. Because we must realize mm. the same as, Rev, uh, as Ephesians chapter six and verse 12, that this is a battle and a war, but it's not against flesh and blood. We should not be battling against each other. We should all be loving each other, okay? But this is a battle that is fought in the heavenly realm against principalities in dark places. And we need to understand that. And because we can't see it all as it plays out, we tend to blame someone else, which is God, and, and look at him as not being just, fair, or equitable, or righteous, and it's not right, and the book of Job is one that truly illustrates that, and there's other examples, uh, the, the example of um, King Jehoshaphat and Ahab uh, with the lying spirit before they went to war. The prophet Micaiah said to them that, it, that if you go to war because you think this is what God said, then God has not spoken to me, and you will not return. He was saying that to Ahab. So um, there is a lot that God, as I say, peels back the mm-hmm. curtains and gives us an opportunity to see who he really is. And I think we should reference them and read them and look at them in the light to see what is God truly trying to say to us. Um, so with um, that being think, said, yes. Sorry, yes. I was just going to jump in um, on the story about Job. I think it's also important to note that what was being questioned was God's trustworthiness 
in his ability to read hearts mm. because he, Satan was saying, you don't actually know Job's heart. Like you say, the moment you um, give him, as in take away all his blessings or the protection that you have around him, um, that he'll turn away from you. So you don't actually know his heart. Yes. And then by, yeah, and so then um, that whole story was really God showing us that he does know how to read our hearts and he Amen. does, he is trustworthy in that way. Amen. And Amen. so, yeah. And Cindy, just to add to that, it was not only that he misjudged, Satan was not only saying that he misjudged um, Job's heart, but he was saying that he misjudged his angels as well. Mm. Job chapter four, he says to Job, how can he trust you? Someone he could crush like a moth. He didn't even, he didn't even judge, you know, uh, the angels, right. When he was saying that, to, uh, sorry, Eliphaz or one of the uh, other two friends. Um, so it was also about him misjudging uh, the angels as well. So very, mm -hmm. very yeah. valid and very important point. Thank you for adding that. Yeah, um, no are there any other comments? Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, can I ask you a question? Of course, obviously. Yes. Sure. So um, you guys have mentioned a couple of times that uh, God is fair. And um, I'm not, uh, I've, I've always told people that no, God doesn't deal in fairness. Okay. Um, so, so you, please, I might be actually messing up the, the meaning of words here because the, you've got fairness you've got unfairness and then I feel like there should be a third part I feel like fairness is neutral if someone is being fair like when you're playing a game the referee tries to be fair they don't pick a side okay. but and I'm not sure if that's the the right way I should be applying this but I think that they should is it correct to say maybe God is God is merciful God God is on the other side of is a the complete opposite of unfairness, which I don't think fairness is the hundred mm. percent opposite of unfair. I feel like God is um, is biased towards the merciful, the helpful side. Yeah, because I guess it's unfair for Jesus to have borne, like, bared all of our sins, or it's but, like unfair that, yeah. It's, so like, to me, I feel like God is just on the, like, he doesn't mind. Like, he doesn't think, oh, he did 50, I should do 50 or something like mm. this. I'm not sure whether this is what you mean, but I, I was, if you guys can help me if I'm uh, messing up, because this is what I always tell people and they say, oh, is it fair? Is it? I'm like, no, no, no. God is not interested in things being fair. God wants things to be good, to be biased mm. towards the good side. That was his plan that every human being I could be wrong, but I always tell people this God's plan was every human being should be born with advantage, not as a Tony. Anthony. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Okay, you see, someone has come to contribute. <laughs> oh, yeah, so like we, so we, we're listening. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah, so I think I think that's basically it. Otherwise, I'll just I'm just repeating myself, I think. Yeah, yeah, but 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 uh, I would like you to put the words the right word yourself, according to what I just said in Matthew chapter five, verses forty-three to forty-five, when God sends the rain for good and bad, and sends the sunshine for good and bad. Is it yeah. fair or fairness? Oh, I can't hear. Oh, I don't think that it's uh, it's fairness. Hmm. I don't think it's fairness. It's it's goodness. It's goodness. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think it's good because like if, because to me in soccer, in soccer when the referee he has the whistle, he is just fair, okay? He just makes sure everything goes according to the plan, according to the rules. Um, but, um, but the players and the supporters, they are on someone's side. They are on one side. They want mm. one thing to happen. Mm. And I think like God is on the side of the human beings. He wants mm. goodness to happen. He, Amen. So, Amen. So I, I don't know if it's correct, but I've always heard people say that you know, God, justice and fairness. I don't know whether it's the same thing, but I think I feel more comfortable saying God is yeah, God, for me, for me, justice is privilege. For me, like privilege. So God gives everyone, pre God wants everyone to have privilege, right? Mm. Rather yeah. than um, 
uh, everyone to be born on a 50-50 level or something like that. God wants everyone to be sort of on, at an advantage. Mm. Yeah. That for I, me, I just... don't know if that's correct. So you guys can work that out because my baby is probably going to come out just now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For me, just this is like, for me, just this is like the way, the, the way God loves you, he will love me the same way. Mm. Even yeah. I'm more bad than you, but he will love me the same way like he love you. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> mm. I, hope, I hope that kind of helps a little bit, Anthony. I don't know if you're still able to hang in there. Yeah. yeah. Amen. And, and, I think, and I think the words are, are really uh, fairly compatible with each other. Uh, it's just that you, you want to choose goodness. And I, I accept that too, because God Amen. is good. Amen. So they're, they're relatively close and same. And, and uh, the illustration of the soccer, um, the soccer referee is, yeah, he's, he's trying to be uh, just and fair um, as well on, on, and have a, as a level playing field. Whereas, whereas he, the soccer ref wasn't accused of being a cheat from the beginning where God was. So we have to remember God has to use truth to be able to, I'm going to say, win his case and, um, as, he, as he goes to trial. Um, where the soccer player, uh, the referee comes in on a, on a fairly even plateau because he's come in with the, with the belief from the players that he is fair. But I think what you said is very valid. I appreciate your your um, your comments there, brother. So thank you um, for that. Can I um, can I just say something there? Oh yes, um, yes, Pastor Ben. Yeah, um, it's an interesting comment. Thank you for it. Um, but I think, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, is that um, there is God is fair according to His rule, according to His law. Like the referee has to uphold the law, isn't it? The, yes. the game, the rule for the game. And uh, the God is fair to the rules of the game. Uh, he cannot uh, deviate from that because that's the way he designed life to work the best. Um, how can he deviate from his own law? He can't. He has to. He has to work according to his own rules. Otherwise, you know, he can't be divided against himself. Right. Exactly. Well, that's what Jesus said: a house divided against itself will collapse. Um, the other thing is Satan doesn't play by the rules, though. I think we all can uh, agree on that. He, he has his own line or, or lack of rules, and he'll do whatever he can to deceive any one of us to just, believe just, in it. Sean, just to unfairness, just to put it simply, um, I think under sin, this world is under sin. There's no fairness in sin, um, especially when you bring two points of, of, of references. Um, sin has its own reference and God has his own reference. I think when we are in heaven, would we say everything is fair then? When sin is passed, everything would be fair. Mm. Um, it depends on the, 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 the mind or the time that we are in. In this world, we can't say things are fair. We know God is fair. There's no doubt because he does the right thing. Um, um, uh, when we use the word fair, we look at more his goodness, not just how he deals with people. But when we look, look at how he deals with people, we need to ask ourselves, is God doing the right thing, the just thing? That's if what's important. Was, yeah. You're on mute, Cindy. You're on mute. Well, sorry. <laughs> In talking about God's goodness um, and fairness, it just reminds me of that parable where everyone does the same work and even the, and the people who, yeah, the vineyard and then the people who come in late still get paid the same yeah it that goes i feel like it's kind of supporting what anthony is saying in the sense that god isn't fair in the sense of what we understand as fair exactly now yeah, exactly yeah our human like, frame, a sinful frame it's not yeah fair. and so but then when it comes to his justice and his law his design laws like yes, he is fair because his his laws is it's goodness. Yeah. So I understand Anthony when he's saying God is good, and that's that's I guess his justice and his like his justice system. But if we're saying fairness, it's it can get misconstrued yeah. based on yeah. how we yeah. understand it. Yeah. yeah, and you're right. When we do it with human perspective or understandings, yes. But from his understanding, he is fair, and that's a great analogy. The, the vineyard when the workers come in, some came in working eight hours, some came in working one hour, but everyone got the same pay. 
So and the workers right. did not agree. No, yeah. they did not. <laughs> but but God but God was still fair because he said to those workers, didn't I promise yeah. you a certain amount of money? And they go, yes. He said, did I give it to you? He says, yes. Mm. So then you cannot be mad at me if I agree to give the same person or another person the same amount of money for less time. It's I promised them that, so that's what I gave them. So Anthony, man, great, great, uh, great point. Mm. Great, great comment. And great supporting verses and comments from you, Cindy and James and Hyper. So thank you for Amen. that. Um, so let's move, uh, move along. So my next question in line with our topic is um, obviously, was God's example of his dealing with sin for human beings only? When we're thinking about this goodness or this justice um, or equitable God that we serve is, um, is his example of how he deals with sin. Is it just for human beings alone? Um, so, I mean, I guess if, if I'll, I'll start that one off, I guess I'll start it off by saying that I, I know normally when we read the Bible, we understand it as primarily dealing with God's plan to save sinners. And that is true. That is a very intricate part of, of the Bible and things like that. But, um, but it, it has a far um, larger um, issue that it's dealing with um, on the pages of scripture. And uh, it's, it's the truthfulness and trustworthiness of, 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 of our creator himself. And that, that's, what's, that's what's unfolding in front of us. Um, the, the question, can God be trusted, um, has raised a lot of, um, uh, was, was, was raised in the hearing of not only humanity when obviously Adam and Eve fell, but in the entire universe uh, was, pr was privy to, to that, those accusations or those charges against God. And his answer, the same, has to be a universal or uh, uh, wide um, response or, or, or reply to the charges that go. So um, the controversy is more an issue of who's telling the truth. Um, who is it? Is it God or the brilliant um, leader of the angels, angels, the light bearer, Lucifer, now known as Satan, our adversary, or better pronounced as Satan, our adversary. Um, the, the, the former light bearer, um, we know that he persuaded a third of the angels that we read in Revelation chapter 12 and verse four, I think it is. Um, and so we know that the, 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 um, the dealings with sin has to be far greater or, far, or for more than just us and humanity because a third of the angels were also deceived by, by Lucifer. So with that being said, we know that there must have been some doubt. There must have been a breaking of the trust between God and some of those uh, uh, angelic beings um, to be able to go inside with Lucifer, uh, God's light bearer or former light bearer, I should say. So with that being said, um, we now have the conflict that has extended, extended also to planet earth. And um, Adam and Eve was, was fell victim to the uh, uh, collateral damage, I would call it of the, uh, of the great controversy between Christ and Satan. And they were too, they were also too deceived. So, so now we have this, this great struggle um, that is, uh, is amongst us for um, the loyalty uh, of God's free intelligent uh, creatures. That is us. Who's right? I ask it again, who is right? God himself or the brilliant light bearer? Uh, could it be true that God is arbitrary um, and severe and unworthy of the love and trust of us um, as created beings? Um, so I'll leave it, I'll leave it with you guys to, to share a little bit more, but the, the, the question is, um, was God's example of his dealings with sin and sinners just for, um, human beings only? I cut a lot. I will cut a lot because of the time, but in Romans chapter three, verse 25 to 27, God offered Jesus Christ uh, when, when he's come to die. Is not only for 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 humankind, but also for the sinless angel as well. And he's come to demonstrate his righteousness. When you read uh, in Romans chapter three, verse twenty-five to twenty-seven, and also and also he have to demonstrate his his righteousness because of Genesis chapter three, verse one to four, and especially verse four, and uh, also uh, Jesus. Jesus Christ did not die only for us. He also died for the sinless angel. Now you can have a look in, I just read this one from Ephesians chapter one, verse seven to 10. 
verse 9, I just read verse 9 and 10. He said, God did, God did what he had purposed and make known to us the secret plan he had already decided to complete the mean of Christ. Verse 10 said, this plan which God will complete when the times is right is to bring all creation together, mm. Mm. everything in heaven and on earth Christ, with Christ has, has head, right? Good, because uh, in one of our talk earlier, talking about how peace broken in heaven, yeah. but now God the Father, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit want to bring this peace back to all the family around the universe. And that's the reason Jesus Christ dies, not only for us, but for all his family. Mm. Right. In Ephesians chapter 3, verses 7 to 10, you can read also Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 to 20, and John chapter 12, verses 32. Christ died for sinless angel too. That's what mm. I, I just got a lot. That's okay. Make. Oh, sure. Thank you. You've given us some Bible references so we can all read those Amen. and check them out. Amen. 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 Yeah. Well, I think also, yeah, so there's all the created beings in heaven, in the universe, are watching what has transpired here on earth. Mm. And, um, and I also think, like, if all that was needed was Jesus to die in order to save us, then he could have died when Herod when it was killing all the firstborns, mm. like their easy death, you know, <laughs> but mm-hmm. instead he had to live his life and show God's character. Amen. Cindy. Not, not just to us, but he had to reveal God's character to all Amen. the universe so that they may see that God is good. Amen. And that's why James's Bible verse, John 12, verse 32 If I be lifted up, I will draw all unto me. Mm -hmm. Most Bible translations say all men, but that's added. The the true translation is will draw all unto me. And that's Mm -hmm. why what you just said is so correct because it aligns with that Bible verse right there. All the created beings will be drawn Mm -hmm. to him for what he did. And he could not die when Herod was trying to kill him because he had to, as you said, he had to show the father's character because there was so much confusion and misunderstanding Uh, through the times in the ages coming up to when Jesus was born, that he came to reveal it. And before he died on the cross, he said to his father in prayer, he says, I have done what you've asked me. I have um, displayed your character. And I, and then that's why he says it is finished. I have done that. And now it's up to us to make our choice on who we can trust in the great controversy. Is it God or is it the light bearer? And Jesus Christ is the, is the truest revelation of God, even though he was in the flesh, but he was God in the flesh. Mm, amen. And, and it's, it's what, what's so beautiful about the story that Jesus became a human being and died the way he died was um, I read a book that explained how the angels must have felt to have the presence of their God leaving heaven to this world. Mm, yeah. And what he came in to did for us when he brought us back not only did he reconcile us back to God, but he reconciled the angels back to us. Remember, we, we had enmity against God and we had enmity against the angels as well. In the beginning, when Adam and Eve sinned, we were separated from our relationship with God and with angels. And remember the story of Jacob, the Jacob's letter, the angels are walking up and down and then he asks, what is the letter? The letter is, the, is, is Christ himself. So Christ is the point between bringing us together. And I like what you're saying. When we look at justice and when we look at righteousness, God wants us to come together because his universe was together before sin entered, Amen. before there were questions about it. And God is a relationship God. He's not just the God of, of rules and regulation. We will be always fearful of him if we don't see God as a relationship God. So, so it's so, so important to understand that God wanted to reconcile the angels also. 
to bring them down to see what he has done for us. Amen. You know, they mm. they do it for us, becoming servants for us, mm. even washing the feet of his the feet of his enemy, forgiving them. How did the angels then say? I think they never understood the Old Testament, but when Jesus came, they said, "Wow, God, you are revealing to us who you really are." Mm. Because there were, times, there were times that the angels went to God and the accusations were made. There. They said, why don't you just kill the people, destroy them? They don't want to listen. But God said, wait, I will show you. I will show you my revelation. And when Jesus came, they were saying, wow, God, forgive us for feeling probably the way they used to feel towards us. Mm. And it, just, just to add to, to both what um, the three of you have said, actually. Uh, if, if, if any of our readers, I mean, any of our, our listeners or viewers and anyone present now wants to get a Bible verse on that about the, the universe as well, you can look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 9, and it just reads that, um, uh, what does it say? It says, I'm just going to cut halfway through it, but you can read the whole verse. It says, as it were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world. That means a theater unto the world and to mm. angels and to men. Mm. So that right there adds a little bit more um, evidence of uh, this was not just to, for the salvation of humanity. This was a universal wide problem with sin and amen. how God dealt with it was for everyone. So, amen. Is there any, is there any other comments that we wanna say before we move to our, our last question? Um, and we're getting short on time here. So our last question um, in regards to our uh, second topic, uh, which is what is God's um, justice? Everyone's okay. All right. So we move to our to our last to our last question, and our last question is one which is me actually extending like a, a I want personal um, answers back of how you feel um, in reference to this question, and um, so my question is this. In your understanding, pardon me, in your understanding, do you feel that God was just or fair, or I'm going to use the word good, um, good in dealing with sin and sinners? I believe God always just and fair. In the great controversy before God can recreate the heaven and the earth, Everyone who has ever lived, everyone who has ever lived, including the devil himself, will bow and agree mm. that God has been completely fair and that God has done the very best he could have for each individual. You can just read that in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 23, Romans chapter 14, verse 10, Philippians chapter 2, verse 11, verse 10 and 11, sorry. And it's good if you can read it in Good News Bible. It, you know, uh, at that time when all is done, in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 26, said, the moon, the moon will be as bright as the sun and the sun will be seven times brighter than usual, like the light of the seven days in one. Mm. See, mm -hmm. uh, that bothered me quite a bit before, because when God wants to restore everything back to where, where it was, when I hear, uh, when I read the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 16, when God said he created two great lights, one is the, light, uh, the sun, the greatest one, and then the lesser one is the moon. But when I came in Australia, they said to me, the moon have no light, my brother. And that bothered me. And I said, did God lie to us? But no, I find out, no, he don't lie to us. He stopped, it, he stopped the generator of the moon uh, at, at um, uh, the flood, you see? But uh, later on, we can see that what will happen according to Isaiah chapter 30, verse 26. And also chapter, 
chapter 21, verse 23, he said, the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it. And the lamb, which is Jesus Christ, in the light, in the light thereof, God family united at last. Remember that, God family, family united at last. Then the nation will own, uh, no, will, will, will own no other law, which Ben had been talking before, no other law than the law of heaven. All will be a happy, united family, close with the garment of praise and thanksgiving, the robe of Christ's righteousness. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. We're getting, we're getting close. Sean, it's the question you are asking here. It's, it's so true that God's righteousness covers us and gives us the wisdom. But we, we are from a position that we understand these things. But do we really understand? Why did God allow Satan to, to continue? Why did God allow Adam and Eve? Why does he allow pain and suffering? Why does he allow? Is that a just person? Is that the right person that does stuff like that? If we leave a person to continue doing something wrong, we can be locked up as well. Because, mm. quiet, mm. you know, because people will say, and that is what the world will say, you aren't doing the just and the right thing. You are supposed to tell the police what's happening and they're supposed to lock him up so that more violence cannot occur. But you look at the violence that we have in this world today and you ask yourself, you ask yourself, is God really, like your question asked, has God really, really worked with sinners the right way? Was God just in dealing with sin the way he did? And in what is the, the example, or what can we look for for the answer? Because every, every answer we give, some people will say, no, there's so many people that has died. What is the answer? Where do we find the answer for this? In the cross. In the Bible. In the cross. <laughs> in the Bible. In the cross. Ultimately, mm -hmm. the cross. Many In the Old Testament, many didn't understand what was happening. Many questioned what's happening. Why are you allowing this God? Mm. When Jesus mm. came, he gave an answer. The cross in his life was the answer to all the, 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 the difficult questions. And when we, when, that is why I put the cross there. So what is it about the cross that reveals that God is just and fair? How he deals mm. with it. Mm. He, value, he value our freedom. You see? But... Um, no one value our freedom like God himself. Mm. Yeah, the fact that the cross is, a, is we can choose to receive it, um, you know, as in like receive God's gift, just shows. And that's why I, I keep thinking now, big thanks to Anthony, when we say fair, like it's not fair what Jesus had to experience. Yeah. you know um and i think we, we, we that's why it's like you feel like you're not deserving of god's mercy um and for what he did on the cross for us but um but yeah it also goes to show like our freedom um and because of that freedom we do um experience the consequences of sin mm. Mm. so when we do you know, when we um, distance ourselves from God and his protection, we do experience. I mean, even under his protection, God sometimes does allow things to happen, but it's because I believe he sees the bigger picture. And at the end of the day, God is more concerned about our eternal salvation Amen. than anything else. Amen. And um, so it's like, you know, I could die today, but if that means it's going to save, you know, even two people, like, but if, if it means it's going to save people, like, and I'm still going to be in heaven, it's like, that's what God cares about the most is that our eternal life and our eternal salvation mm -hmm. and, and not just mine, but everybody else's. Amen. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And this, I've really, yeah, I really, yes. 
Well, yeah, I was just going to say, like, what God values and what we value is sometimes different. Um, for example, we get upset when you think about John the Baptist, you're losing his life so early. And, um, you know, people would say, oh, why did God allow that? You know, why did God allow him to die so early? Um, and, you know, the other example I can think of is, is Paul. You know, it seemed as though there was some sort of problem with his eyes. And he prayed three times for this to be taken away from him. But then uh, he said, no, my grace is sufficient for you. Mm. You know, it, it seems as though God values things differently. Um, you know, we value mm. life above everything else, but God values eternal life. Mm. And, and in saying that, when great reference, Ben, to um, Paul um, and his, his uh, problem when he asked for forgiveness. But I, I, when you said that, I went, my mind went straight to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ asked his father three times too, could this mm. cup be removed from me? But he heard mm. nothing. He heard nothing. And yet he trusted God enough mm. to go to the cross. So I think that, man, those things that we do have to look at. And as you said, um, God's value system may be a, a bit different than ours. And also I couldn't get the verse off the top of my head, but I think it's in the book of uh, Isaiah where it says, God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts and God's ways mm. are higher than our ways. Um, and that's a paraphrase, so don't hold me to it. Uh, look for it in the book of Isaiah or do a word search and you'll get the right Bible um, mm. verse yourself. But look, I just want to have some closing, uh, closing thoughts. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Anthony, you want to say something? Um, I just wanted to give a story of uh, this lady at my workplace. Uh, she, she was, a, she, she was a, a nurse in the hospital and she said, she, she doesn't believe in God because she has just seen too many kids um, in, in hospital with cancer. So I'm um, just thinking if she took a, took a time to watch this, um, this discussion about whether God is, is fair or not, or just, or, or even good, and, and, she, and if she listened to this, I don't know whether she would come away thinking, uh, yep, yep, that's right, that's right, God is good. Um, you know, I don't know if this is actually a relevant question in this part, but I just, I'm just thinking about, I don't know, when Hyper was talking, that's when I thought about this question. That this lady said that. She said, mm -hmm. um, well, if, well, I didn't, be, I don't believe in God because all I needed to do, I worked in the, I've just seen too many bad things in the hospital for me to believe that there's a good God out there, you know? Yeah. And so that's, that's one thing. I don't, and then the second thing that I wanted to say was, um, that's, this, that, that's one aspect of things that people can't control. The second aspect is when it comes to doing bad things and evil things, it's not God who has to stop that. It's people who have to stop that. So, so, so God can't stop that. So people are the ones who have to decide to stop doing certain things because God can't control people. So when it comes to stopping sin, it's actually a human responsibility. It's human, human beings. It's a choice. We have to decide. We are not doing this anymore. And then that thing stops. So, um, so evil can't, it has to be a human decision on earth. Someone on earth has to decide one by one that it's, you know, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I just was my thought. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I yeah. believe, I believe um, if God did not interfere in the life of Job, Job will be dead straight away. And God put his protection around Job to stop the devil go further to kill him. Mm. And we, we, we let a lot of things happening we don't know. But the, the little thing we know already we thank God for that. Otherwise, we will not be here either, you know. But uh, mm -hmm. now we know God government is, is, is love and his law. And we know all of that now. We thank God for to, mm -hmm. to, to reveal all of that to us. Mm, amen. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Brother Anthony, maybe you might suggest to your, your friend or your colleague that she might listen to this. And um, you don't know how God can touch your heart. And our, our purpose for this is not to convince anyone of anything. Mm. Our purpose for this is to share Bible scriptures and experiences 
that the Holy Spirit can convict people's hearts on what is true. And you know what? The Holy Spirit can do it. So Amen. maybe, so maybe when, yeah, brother, maybe when we put it, when Hyper posts it up on YouTube and uh, on our Facebook, maybe you might refer her to it or share a link uh, for her so she may have a look. And she can always feel free to reach out to us through uh, Let's Talk About God 3 at gmail.com or our Let's Talk About God Facebook page. Um, I'm going to give uh, final thoughts now before I hold. Close, uh, uh, final thoughts on my questions and my topic, and then I'm going to give it over to Hyper for closing comments and um, for benediction. I'm going to be fairly quick, okay? I just want to say um, that it was God's purpose uh, not only to, to show uh, where the breakdown of trust began, which he, he made it known to us in Revelation chapter 12, where it initially uh, uh, initial breakdown began, but also he showed us in the Garden of Eden where it began for us. In heaven, that was where it began with the angelic host. And then for us, it began here through an angel that came here. Um, so, uh, um, but he also wanted to demonstrate to the universe the nature of rebellion. Uh, and while showing, and to still at the same time, while still showing his mercy and justice, plus fully vindicating his character um, in regards to how he deals with sin. Mm -hmm. um, Satan's rebellion uh, was to be a lesson uh, to the universe um, of, uh, through all coming ages, um, a perpetual testimony to the nature and terrible results of sin. Uh, God's justice will, will finally be acknowledged by the whole world, uh, though the acknowledgments may be too late to save the rebellion or the rebellious. The whole universe as a witness to the great controversy will declare just and true are your ways thou king of saints and that's in revelation chapter 15 verse 3 where we started our conversation um and i just look forward personally and i hope it is also your hope as well look forward personally to singing that song of, of the ransom uh to, to the lord and to meet uh the other saved at the holy city in heaven and sing that song where we will be having where, where, the, where the, the heaven will be filled with um, rich music and with songs of praise to the Lamb. Mm. Amen. So just to add on to that, um, I'd just like to close with uh, something that was really on my mind, and I want to put it into Ephesians 2, verse 14, and I want to read it for, for all of us. Okay. Uh, it says there, for he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall separation, mm -hmm. having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of the commandments contained in the ordinance, so as to create in himself one new man from two, thus making peace, mm -hmm. and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross thereby putting death to enmity. Amen. <laughs> That's really something that we can close on. Thank you, Brendan. Thank you, Thank you Brendan. To separation, I love that. I was, uh, funny enough, my conclusion is on, 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 on bringing us back together again. You know, um, I just wanted to say just shortly, this is my closing. I just want to answer some of the questions on the cross. The cross, we need to read the story of the cross and actually Absolutely. see what's happening there so that we can understand why are all these bad things happening in this world? And like mm. many of us says, it's freedom of choice, but also how God deals with sinners. You know, how God deals with sinners. And I wish we could have caught them there, but this is what I wanted to share in closing. I, but I, now, before, you, I, but before you close, I just want to say, I, I, I forgot to say this. I want to say thank you to everyone who's joined us today um, for this talk and your input, whether it was verbal or just by your presence being here has been awesome. And I just pray God's blessing on all of us as we um, tread lightly <laughs> through uh, the great controversy. And um, may what we've shared uh, challenge your position and your view of God. And may you look back and check out the scriptures that we're referenced here 
that will help to give a better understanding of who God is as it was revealed in his son, Jesus Christ. Sorry about that, Hyper. I just wanted to say that. And I hope to see you guys again soon. And, and it's so important, you know, um, this, is, this forum is not to get all the answers for everything. Um, when you find the answers, when you spend time with God, Amen. God will reveal it to you. Um, it's, it's for us to talk and, and bring up the questions in our minds so that we go, and go back and read about these things. Because it's, it's very important in today's life. But this is what I wanted to share in closing. But now, this is God's message about justice for us today. Live out God's style of justice in our daily life. God just wants us to live like him. Mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, the pastor was sharing earlier, Benjamin was sharing earlier about Jesus um, when John died. Um, you read the story. Actually, Jesus left there and he went to a quiet place. He was sorrowful, painful to, to lose John the Baptist. Yeah. But when he came back, he gave food, he healed people. That is his justice. He came back to do the right thing. Sometimes we think our justice is supposed to take revenge upon the person. But God's justice was to give and to do for others. Mm. And this is what God wants us to live by. We know that God's people in the end will live out this kind of compassionate, restorative justice. In Revelation 19, verse 7 to 8 says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife was made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the fine linen is the righteous acts, righteousness of the saints. Now we know in, in the Bible, the word righteousness is the word justice. There's no different word there. In the Greek, it's, it's justice. Righteousness is justice. We are called to be a special kind of people. And today we can decide to be like, that. okay, we will make mistakes. We will make mistakes, but let us keep on holding on to who God is, what God is like. Amen. To restore, we were speaking, Brennan, you were speaking about that, to break down that enmity, to restore relationship between parents and kids, to restore peace between Democrats and Republicans, <laughs> between the right of politics and the left of politics. The liberals and the labor. And the liberals and the labor to restore us into yeah. unity so that we can work together for a better future, Amen. for eternity. So I pray and I desire that we should have this kind of relationship with God that we can share with our families, where we do the right thing, mm. with our friends, with our workplace, where we do the right thing, that people can stand up and say, you are right and you are just, and then you point them to Jesus Christ. Amen. By doing the right thing, Hyper, I think we make God happy because imagine how God must feel to continue to port Christians to his 10 commandments that says thou shall not lie and steal and oh. murder and adultery and, 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 and take his name in vain. We, have, we must mature as Christians where God does not have to continue to remind us of that. Where God, where, where we make a choice, like you said, Hyper, to do the right thing because that is what is right. I think those that is the sign of a mature Christian to do the right thing because that is right. Mm. Because he wants to write it on our laws. Let's, let's pray out. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we are so thankful for the privilege of sharing and coming together. There's never enough time mm. um, to talk about you. You are so broad, so wide, so deep mm. that um, our feeble minds and just even just the language, English language is so limited to explain your glory and your mighty and who your almighty God is. Father, you have shown that you are Lord of our lives. You have shown through the life and death of Jesus Christ that you can be trusted. You are trustworthy, dear Lord. And, 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 this, and that everything you do is just, and it's fair if only we understand these things in the right way. Yes, fairness may not be quantified. It may be quanti quanti qualified and quantified in different ways. But we know, we know that your righteousness, your goodness, your justice is, is, is what we are looking for each day of our lives. When we go to work, when we wake up and we go to work and we spend time with our families and with people. 
Father, let us live this life. Let us, let us, uh, it's, it's, it's not easy to tell people to live this life, but let us focus on you. Let us spend time in, in understanding and trying to know who you are and what you are like. And then we can reveal who you are in our lives. And then you can write the law in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I pray, I pray that you guys will join us next week when Hyper leads us in the talk as we share about God's wrath. May you, may you join us and may we meet again. Invite more guests. Invite more people who want to learn more about their loving father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Bye. Bye-bye.